Number 10. Sigiria Starting off the list today is the ancient rock city of Sigiria, located in present-day Sri Lanka. What's really amazing about this lost city is that it's built into a giant rock. It's an ancient city literally carved into a massive stone that rises about 600 feet above the ground in the middle of an otherwise flat and uninteresting landscape. Ever since foreigners have stepped foot on the island nation of Sri Lanka, the lost city of Sigiria has baffled them. It was designated as a cultural world heritage site in 1982, and it is still an important location for research and archaeology. The ancient city is steeped in mystery and intrigue. Most historians agree that the area surrounding Sagira had been inhabited ever since prehistoric times. This means the giant rock had been used as shelter for 5,000 years. But even though our ancient ancestors may have taken shelter there, the city of Sagiria became truly famous in the 5th century, when it was transformed into a magical place. King Kashiapa transformed the enormous rock into a fortress and pleasure garden. This is the same king who assassinated his father and stole the throne from his brother. Because King Kashapa feared that there would be a retaliation against him for stealing the throne and committing patricide, he decided to live inside the fortified palace high up on the giant rock. He made Sigiria an impenetrable fortress. But even still, this ancient city was overrun and defeated in 495. The rightful heir destroyed his brother and took the throne and the city of Sigiria was transformed into a monastery for Buddhist monks, where it operated up until the 14th century before fading into the history books. Number 9. Sanchi Sanchi is an ancient lost city from India. It has an impressive history, stretching back at least a thousand years. The city had its origins in the 3rd century BC, and construction continued all the way until the 11th century. The city was ultimately abandoned in the 13th century after the death of Buddhism in India, and Sanchi then remained empty and neglected until it was rediscovered in 1818 by a British officer. The most famous part of this immense Buddhist complex is its great stupa, located at the very top of the tallest hill in Sanchi town. It's considered to be one of the oldest stone structures in all of India, and it was the first major piece of Sanchi to be built in the 3rd century by Emperor Ashoka. Furthermore, the Great Stupa was allegedly constructed at the very place where the emperor's wife was born. Sanchi has four decorated gateways, each one facing a cardinal direction and depicting various life events from the Lord Buddha. Sanchi was once considered to be one of the most important Buddhist locations in all of ancient India, and the fact that such an important place was abandoned goes to show just how completely the majority of the country gave up on Buddhism hundreds of years ago in favor of Hinduism. Number 8. Pompeii Pompeii is definitely the most famous lost city on the list today. However, Pompeii was lost because of a natural disaster and not because of abandonment. It's considered to be the best preserved ancient Roman city, all thanks to the blankets of ash that cover the town when Mount Vesuvius erupted on August 24th, 79 AD. Volcanic debris fell upon the city, followed by clouds of insanely hot gases. Buildings were destroyed, the entire population was either crushed or suffocated, and Pompeii became covered in ash. Then, for centuries, Pompeii slept inside its preserved state until the 1700s, when the city was finally rediscovered. What's really amazing about the lost city of Pompeii is that even today, new discoveries are being made all the time. The city was so effectively ruined that archaeologists are still digging petrified human remains out of the rubble. It might be the longest disaster recovery mission in human history. At the time of Pompeii's destruction, there was somewhere around 20,000 people living in the city, Almost none of them escaped. And while people are usually interested in the ghosts of Pompeii, not many people know about its origins. But Pompeii was actually settled by Neolithic inhabitants thousands of years ago. The city wasn't cultured by the Greeks until they settled in the area in the 8th century BC. Pompeii was mostly ruled by a Greek homogeny until the region was captured by an Italic tribe in the 5th century. The first time Pompeii is mentioned in the history books wasn't until 310 BC, 
when a Roman fleet landed at the port to try and subjugate the surrounding towns. Pompey teamed up with the local Italians and they revolted against Rome. However, the Romans won the battle and the south of Italy was absorbed into the Roman Empire. Number 7. Caral Caral in Peru is an ancient city of pyramids. What's truly fascinating about Caral in Peru is that it's older than any other known civilization in the Americas. It's just as old as the pyramids of Egypt. According to the BBC, researchers are now thinking that the lost city of Caral could be a mother city meaning it was a central city from which early humans branched out from. Keep in mind that in the earliest stages of human civilization, there were not very many of us. Civilization really only started in about six different places in the world. From these places, humans spread out over thousands of years. In the beginning, small family units turned into settlements, settlements turned into towns, and then a mother city was born. From that mother city, the rest of humanity spread out. Archaeologists now believe that Corral could have been the mother city of South America, basically the first major city ever on the continent. What's even more interesting is that even though Corral is 5,000 years old, archaeologists have found no trace of warfare. There were no mutilated remains and no weapons discovered. What archaeologists did find were musical instruments, drugs that may have been used as aphrodisiacs and hallucinogens, and other remains of one of the first peaceful societies in South America. Other than that, very little is known about this ancient city and its pyramids. Number 6. Tanis Tanis was once the Egyptian capital, but you would never think that by looking at its remains. This lost city is a perfect example of how empires rise and fall and leave almost nothing behind. The city of Tanis was the capital of the 21st and the 22nd Egyptian dynasties. It was located on the Nile, making it a prosperous trade center. However, political upheaval made the city socially unstable, the waters of the Nile continued to rise, and Tanis was eventually forgotten. The actual ruins of Tanis eluded archaeologists until 1939, when a French researcher uncovered a burial tomb with a huge wealth of ancient artifacts. In fact, the royal tombs are all that remains of the once great city of Tanis. All other structures have been demolished and built over, all traces of the capital city have been erased, and the only thing remaining are a few ancient burial plots from thousands of years ago. Number 5. Mohenjo-Daro Mohenjo-Daro is one of the oldest cities known to historians. Its ruins are currently located in southeastern Pakistan, and the city was only discovered in the 1920s. To this day, there are still huge questions surrounding the origins of the city. What type of culture thrived there? And why was it ultimately abandoned? Mohenjo-Daro was part of the ancient Indus civilization, who thrived in the 3rd century BC. But they only built a few cities and didn't really leave the Indus Valley. They weren't nearly as explorative as the neighboring kingdom of Mesopotamia. Nonetheless, most researchers agree that Mohenjo-Daro was far ahead of its time in terms of city structure. The layout of the city and its public buildings have indicated that the Indus Valley civilization was way ahead of several other ancient civilizations of the time. They were one of the first peoples to create a city in a grid format. This means that the designers of Mohenjo-Daro actually had to plan and develop it much like any modern city would be developed today. They even had a public water supply and sewage system with flushing toilets and large public baths. And this was thousands of years before people in America were struggling with the same problem. Number 4. Troy Troy is certainly the most mythical lost city ever. There may have been more films, books, and other pieces of entertainment made about the city of Troy and its destruction than almost any other ancient city. But it's hard to separate myth from reality. Was the Trojan city truly defeated by a wooden horse in the middle of the night? And did the gods really have influence over the Trojan War? The answer to both these questions is probably not. According to live science, the Trojan War probably took place at the end of the Bronze Age, if it ever took place at all, right around 12,000 BC. The war was fought between the Trojans and the Greeks, with the Greeks unable to take the ancient city of Troy because the Trojans would simply push them back into the sea. But considering how long ago this happened, 
Nobody knows exactly how the Trojan War was fought, or how exactly it ended, or if it even occurred. What we do know is that Troy has been inhabited for about 4,000 years. It was never just a single city either. Troy has been destroyed and rebuilt at least 10 times, with the new city being built over the ruins of the old city. Troy has also changed names numerous times throughout the centuries. And while its history is quite complex throughout 4,000 years of inhabitants, the main thing you need to know is that during the Middle Ages, Troy fell into serious decline. By the 13th century AD, nothing was left of Troy except for a small farming community. Today, it's nothing more than a small tourist attraction in modern-day Turkey. Number 3. Machu Picchu Everyone knows about Machu Picchu. It's one of the most visited tourist attractions in the world. But ask just about any person standing with their selfie stick inside the lost city of Machu Picchu where exactly they are, they probably won't have a clue. That's because Machu Picchu is a mysterious window into the past with a complex and cryptic history. We know that the ancient Incan civilization was the most powerful in all of South America, and it was them who constructed Machu Picchu. But the exact purpose and meaning of why they built such a grand city so high in the Andean forest is still a bit of a mystery. Also, nobody is entirely sure why it was abandoned and forgotten. So far as we know, Spanish conquistadors never discovered the ancient city, and none of the Incan descendants ever gave away its whereabout. It wasn't found again until 1911 by an explorer and historian. This was because by the time the Spanish arrived in Peru, Machu Picchu wasn't in use anymore. It had already been abandoned. That meant there were no roads leading to it, and because it was so high up in the mountains, there was no reason for anyone to go looking for it. As for the lost city of Machu Picchu itself, the city was constructed in such a way that the temples and slopes of the roofs would catch and reflect sunlight. The effect was like a shining city of gold. Number 2. Skara Bre Skara Bre is older than the Egyptian pyramids, Machu Picchu, and Stonehenge. Way before many of the most advanced civilizations that we know of were constructing pyramids and massive temples, people were living in Scarabre, which is located today on the island of Orkney in Scotland. It is considered to be the best preserved Neolithic settlement in all of Western Europe, and it was discovered in a very strange way. It all happened when a farmer discovered the settlement on his property. At first, the farmer didn't know what he had found, but after some serious excavations, he realized he had an entire city buried underground on his property. This turned out to be Scarabre, built over 5,000 years ago and preserved beneath grass and sand for thousands of years after, making it just about as perfect as the day it was built. The city likely only had about 50 or 100 residents, living in crude habitations built of rock and sand. We have no idea why the place was abandoned, who lived inside the rock houses, or where they went after. Still, it's safe to say that Scarabre is one of the oldest, most remote, and most truly mysterious lost cities on Earth. Number 1. Ciudad Perdida Ciudad Perdida translates in English to lost city, making it quite literally a lost city. This ancient place is located in Colombia. It's older than Machu Picchu, and almost nobody visits it. This is because it's hidden deep in the Colombian jungle, near the Caribbean coast in the north. It was originally built by the Tirana people at least a thousand years ago, and it was only rediscovered in the 1970s. That's how incredibly remote the lost city of Colombia really is. The reason Ciudad Perdida is often compared to Machu Picchu is because they look kind of similar. Both the ancient cities were built on hillsides and hidden within the dense South American forest. However, the lost city in Colombia is at least 600 years older than its Peruvian counterpart. There's also no proper way to reach the ruins. You can only find the lost city by hiking for several days through the perilous jungle. There is literally no other way to get there. Because of its remoteness, there have not been a lot of popular investigations of the ancient city. While we definitely know who built it, 
we still don't have much of an idea about how the civilization operated or why they abandoned their hillside city. According to CNN, in 2003, a group of tourists, while on their way to find the lost city, were kidnapped and held hostage for a hundred days. This is one of the reasons why people have some understandable reservations about wandering into the Colombian jungle to find the legendary Ciudad Perdida. Have you visited any of these ancient cities? If so, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 10, The Plague Fort. Starting off our list of the most incredible abandoned places is somewhere known as the Plague Fort. Sounds a little creepy, right? Its proper name is actually Fort Alexander, but Russians know it as the island fortress where scientists battled death and disease throughout the 1800s. Fort Alexander was constructed on a platform of sand and concrete in the middle of the Gulf of Finland, and it was originally used to protect the mainland from a possible invasion. But the invasion never came, and Fort Alexander was used for a new purpose. That purpose of being a research laboratory to study the plague. As a remote, man-made island, Fort Alexander was the perfect place to research the bacterium, which caused the Black Death, causing pathogens and develop a vaccine. This went on for a while, with more studies being done for cholera and tetanus, but the lab ultimately shut down in 1917. According to Live Science, the fort was then used by Russian Navy as a storage facility until it was entirely abandoned once again in the 1980s. There was a project to turn the fort into an entertainment complex, but it failed to happen. In the cold winters, the surrounding water starts to freeze over. During this time, many thrill seekers and urban explorers visit the Plague Fort in search of adventure. Number 9. The Old Idaho Penitentiary The Old Idaho Penitentiary is probably the most haunted, abandoned location on today's list. The state penitentiary began its life in 1870 as a house with just a single cell. But over time, the penitentiary grew into a complex of buildings, with a large wall to fence in the inmates. As part of their punishment, inmates were forced to build the very walls that kept them prisoner. Between 1870 and 1970, over 13,000 convicts moved in and out of the Idaho State Penitentiary. According to the Travel Channel, at least 110 people died in total from illness, old age, and murder. Life at this eerie prison institution was brutal. There were at least 600 prisoners held there at any given time, stuffed into the most inhumane conditions imaginable. In fact, the prison didn't even have proper plumbing until the 1920s, causing many of the inmates to become sick with disease. Up until the 1970s, violence was also rampant. A riot broke out in 1973, the chapel was burned, and later on that year the penitentiary was closed and abandoned. There were 11 executions in Idaho's history, 10 of them happened here. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 8. The Ghost Town of Ras al Khaimah The ghost town of Ras al Khaimah is located in the United Arab Emirates. This abandoned village is shrouded in mystery, and with its bizarre history, it's pretty easy to see why. It was once a thriving community, but has since been taken over by the desert sands. Almost lost, though not quite, but it's also not on any tourist map. The small hamlet began life in the 14th century, constructed by a few local tribes, and it experienced a lot of changes throughout the years. By 1830, an estimated 200 people lived in the tiny village, with most of them working as fishermen. But by the 20th century, it grew to 2,000 people living there. But all of a sudden, the town was abandoned. Everyone just up and left. Most people believe that persistent tribal conflicts caused the villagers to pack up and leave in the 1960s. Some say the land is haunted with ancient ghosts, but nobody knows for sure why the village was so quickly abandoned. Today, the town is silent, the buildings are crumbling, and there isn't a soul to be seen. Number 7. The Island of the Lepers Did you think all of the Greek islands were well-known hotspots for vacationers? Well, there is one mysterious abandoned island in Greece that almost nobody really knows about. It's called Spinolonga, nicknamed Island of Death, and it was once used as a leper colony. In the early 1900s, anyone afflicted with leprosy in Greece was sent to this single island. 
One time, there were about 400 lepers living in isolation. If you're not sure what leprosy is, it's a horrifying disease that causes sores to sprout all over one's skin, and back then there was no cure. It wasn't until the 1940s the first effective treatment was available. Once diagnosed with leprosy, people were often burned. They were shunned from their homes, and in the case of Greece, they were sent to this now abandoned island. But what's really disturbing about the island of lepers in Greece is that even though a treatment was discovered, Greece kept the leper colony operational all the way until 1957. This is not an ancient piece of history. People who were born in 1957 are still alive today. According to BBC Travel, it wasn't until 1957 that the colony was finally closed and the island was abandoned. Since then, the government has done its best to keep the island's grisly past a secret. Number 6. Ellis Island Immigrant Hospital The Ellis Island Immigrant Hospital was one of the very first public health facilities in the United States. The hospital is located in New Jersey, built on a pair of man-made islands constructed from the leftover land that had been used for the Lexington Avenue subway line. One of the islands held the general hospital, while the other island had a contagious disease hospital. Both hospitals were pretty bleak places to go to, especially for the immigrants who arrived in America and were found to have diseases. When the newcomers would arrive, doctors would assess them, and if anything was amiss, a person would receive a chalk mark on their chest. Those with suspected mental defects were marked with an X. People with visible eye diseases were given an E, heart defects got an H, and pregnant women received a PG. This often meant a long and miserable stay at one of these facilities, followed by a ruthless deportation back to their own country. Children were often abandoned, families were torn in half, and couples were separated by the government. This was a horrendous time and a horrifying place in United States history. In 1930, the hospital was shut down, immigration restrictions were tightened, and then finally in 1954, both islands were abandoned. They were considered excess federal property and made off limits to the public. Today, the only way to visit these abandoned hospitals is through a limited tour. Number 5. Lake Shawnee Amusement Park The Lake Shawnee Amusement Park is, without a doubt, the creepiest place on today's list. The amusement park is currently abandoned, it's overgrown, and it's extremely hard to find in the dense backwoods of West Virginia. But what makes it truly fascinating is its disturbing history. In the late 1700s, the Clay family bought a parcel of land near Lake Shawnee. They used this land to create their new home. However, Native Americans were not too happy about it. In 1783, they attacked and killed two of the family's children, took a third child captive, then burned him alive. A group of settlers then went after the Native Americans and killed several of them. 144 years later, the same land was turned into a small amusement park with a water slide and a dance hall. But they simply couldn't get rid of the stain of violence. Between 1927 and 1966, at least six people died at the Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Perhaps the land is cursed because of its horrifying reputation, plus the fact that it was pretty much located in the middle of nowhere, the park was forced to shut down. Today, the Lake Shawnee Amusement Park is still abandoned. Number 4. The Port Arthur Penitentiary Tasmania is not a place that's talked about very often, but today we're going to talk about the Port Arthur Penitentiary, one of the most brutal places in all of Australia. Australia began as a penal colony, and Port Arthur in Tasmania was basically the Alcatraz of Australia. Port Arthur started life in 1833 as a penal colony for Irish convicts. It was supposed to be the toughest prison in Australia, and absolutely inescapable. The inmates there were forced to work at a timber station. In 1855, Port Arthur Penitentiary was expanded and turned into an even bigger prison. They even had their own island where the dead were buried, with 1,646 graves allegedly still there, and only 180 of them marked. But by 1877, Port Arthur was closed. The prison was abandoned, many of the prison houses were destroyed, and today all that remains of this once brutal facility is a decaying tourist attraction. But we haven't talked about the most notorious killer from Port Arthur. On April 28, 1996, a man named Martin Bryant entered the cafe at the Port Arthur Penitentiary tourist attraction and killed 12 people, wounded 10 more, 
then walked into the gift shop and killed eight more people before walking out into the car park and opening fire on the tourists. At the end of the day, Martin Bryant killed 35 people and injured 23. Suffice to say, Port Arthur maintains its horrific legacy. Number 3. Atalaya Castle Atalaya Castle in South Carolina is a mysterious mansion with 30 rooms and a whole lot of ghosts. The castle overlooks Huntington Beach State Park, and it was originally built as a Spanish-style compound by a rich couple. The woman of the house, Anna Huntington, enjoyed creating sculptures of animals. That's why at Atalaya Castle, rather than ballrooms and guest quarters, you will instead find bear pens and huge indoor studios. The mansion was built with space to hold wildcats, monkeys, and even stallions. Plus, there were dozens of rooms to hold the servants. However, the Huntingtons did not design any rooms for guests because they wanted to live in complete isolation. Basically, Atalaya Castle is a strange fortress set up on the seashore. It was a private getaway for eccentric philanthropists. Mr. Huntington died in 1955, and since then the mansion was subsequently abandoned. In 1960, the massive piece of property was leased to the state. And finally, in 1984, it became a national historic place and a public tourist attraction. You can still see the rooms where Anna Huntington created her strange yet eerily beautiful sculptures. Number 2. Abandoned Paris Railway You can get almost anywhere in Paris in just a few minutes by taking the metro. But what a lot of people don't know is there is an abandoned railway line that circles the entire city of Paris. It actually predates the current Paris metro by many years, and it was used as a connection between the exterior suburbs of the city and the main train stations. It apparently served urban travelers from between 1862 and 1934 before its abrupt abandonment. What's really remarkable is that construction on this railway line began in 1852 during the empire of Napoleon III. However, the 20th century Paris boom saw the circular railway become obsolete. Today, the railway is still there. It's mostly overgrown with flowers and other vegetation, not to mention all the graffiti and street art, but otherwise it's remained untouched by human hands and hidden out of sight along the edges of the city of love. Number 1. The Quincy Mine the Quincy Mine is not only one of the most historic places in Michigan, it's also the perfect place for ghost hunters and adventure-seeking enthusiasts. The mine was operational from between 1846 and 1945, plus it had a bit of mining activity in the 1970s. But since its early days of glory, the Quincy Mine has been abandoned and shuttered. There is pretty much nothing that remains of the old mining town today other than a few empty wooden houses that look too scary to enter and a handful of brick buildings, most of them without roofs, that haven't been used since the 30s and 40s. It's unclear exactly what caused everyone to leave this little hamlet. Probably when the mining stopped, everyone simply packed up and left. Today, it's an extremely bizarre place to visit. The old town is situated on the side of the highway. It's an entire ghost neighborhood, viewable from the road as you drive by. There doesn't appear to be any plans to demolish the town. Maybe it can be used as a location for shooting a horror film? Number 10. The Vampire of Venice Italian researchers believe that they have discovered the remains of a lady vampire buried in Venice with a brick stuck between her jaw. The reason that the brick was placed between her jaw was probably to prevent her from biting people if she somehow managed to rise from the grave. According to an anthropologist from the University of Florence named Matteo Borini, the discovery was made on a small island in the Venice Lagoon, and it's supporting the theory that vampires were truly feared during medieval Europe, especially during the Black Death. This was a time when many Europeans were dying from disease and a lot of them blamed it on vampires. Before scientists discovered the germ theory of infectious diseases, the supernatural was often blamed for bad events, like the plague. Believe it or not, this was the first archaeological discovery that truly reconstructed the ritual that Europeans undertook to get rid of vampires. The skeleton came out of a mass grave filled with plague victims from around 1576. Plagues devastated Europe between 1300 and 1700, 
and this really helped to boost their belief in vampires. They really thought that sticking a brick inside of a dead person's mouth would stop them from turning into an evil bloodsucker. Number 9. The Tower of Skulls In other horrifying archaeological news, a giant Aztec tower of human skulls, believed to be about 500 years old, was recently unearthed. In Mexico, this site is known as Way Zampantli, first discovered in 2015. But recently, a new find added 119 skulls to the previously discovered 484 skulls. This has raised the total number of skulls used to build the horrifying tower to 603. All the skulls had been stuck together with mortar to create a literal Tower of Death. Researchers are saying that it was one of seven skull towers that stood throughout the ancient Aztec city of Tenochtitlan, what is now modern-day Mexico City. The towers were first mentioned by Hernán Cortés in 1521, with most of them being destroyed by Spanish conquistadors shortly after their arrival. According to Rodrigo Bolanas, one of the biological anthropologists investigating the site, one of the most shocking revelations was that the new skulls came from not only men, but also women and children. As of now, it's unclear who the skulls belong to or why the skulls of children were added to this disturbing landmark. What do you think it was? To scare people? An honor to the gods? Let me know in the comments below, and then be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new here. We have more awesome videos coming up. Number 8. The Voices of Mummies In a paper published in 2020, researchers claimed that they managed to recreate the voice of an ancient Egyptian mummy that died 3,000 years ago. Researchers did this by recreating the mummy's vocal tract using special medical scanners, newly advanced 3D printing, and a unique electronic larynx tool. The authors of the scientific paper said that this technique allowed them to produce just one sound, a single vowel. And yet, this one vowel turned out to be one of the scariest sounds that researchers ever heard. It was a very close reflection of how the Egyptian priest Nes Yumun, who they had chosen for their research, would have sounded. However, the sound was not exactly perfect because the mummy had already lost its tongue and they were unable to recreate that. Researchers also said that their model wasn't enough to synthesize entire words or sentences. But, I mean, even just hearing a grunt or a groan from a mummy is pretty terrifying. Just imagine if this ancient priest did come back to life and started uttering scary sounds. Number 7. Strange New Dinosaur A strange and terrifying new species of dinosaur has recently been discovered. This dinosaur lived about 110 million years ago along the shores of an old lagoon in what is now Brazil. It was from the Cretaceous period, and the dinosaur stood on two legs. It was about the size of a chicken, but it was horrifying. The dinosaur had an incredible mane of hair with two extremely strange structures protruding from its shoulders, kind of like really long horns. Scientists are saying that these almost ribbon-like protrusions were made from the same material that makes our hair and fingernails. This is called keratin, and it's the same kind of stuff that's responsible for rhino horns. Even though there are many strange dinosaurs out there, David Martill from the University of Portsmouth in England said that this is one unlike any other. It didn't even have proper feathers. It had something called proto-feathers, which were like a rudimentary type of feather first seen in small dinosaurs. Even though the fossils of this creepy monster, which is called Ubirajada jubatus, by the way, were first found in the 1900s. It wasn't until just recently that scientists were able to figure out the size and shape of the dino. And suffice to say, it has shocked the world of paleontology. Number 6. A Brutal Murder a new discovery from 2020 has revealed an Anglo-Saxon skull with a very brutal story behind it. About 1,100 years ago in medieval England, a teenage girl came to a sad and horrifying end. According to the evidence found on the skull, her lips were cut with a weapon and her nose was sliced off. She also may have been scalped. As of right now, nobody knows why the woman needed to be mutilated in such a vicious way. The only logical explanation is that the woman was being punished for something horrific that she did, or labeled horrific by lawmakers of the time. Lead researcher Gerard Cole said that the highly formalized nature of the woman's grotesque injuries suggests that she was paying some kind of penalty for acting out or possibly being promiscuous or even a religious heretic. 
She was clearly considered by that community and its leaders to be deviant, and they felt justified in torturing her. Truly savage and disturbing. As for how the skull was found, it was originally discovered in the 1960s at an excavation site in the small village of Oak Ridge. However, it wasn't until 2020 that the analysis of the skull was completed and published in the scientific journal Antiquity. Number 5. Nightmare Reef A British ghost ship has recently been found by archaeologists in Mexico, and it's a pretty scary sight to behold. The British ship is about 200 years old, and it has been turning into an underwater nightmare ever since it was sunk for unknown reasons. Even though the wreck was originally spotted in the 1990s by a local fisherman, about 22 miles or 35 kilometers from the coast of Quintana Roo, the wreck wasn't explored for the first time until 2020 by divers with Mexico's National Archaeological Institute. The ship is currently sitting at the bottom of an ancient historical trade route that had gone between Colombia and Spain with a short stop in Havana. But because of the size of the reef in this area, it was actually responsible for a lot of wreckages back in the 1800s. So far, there have been about 70 shipwrecks discovered in this one reef. It's a formidable graveyard of ancient vessels, and not a good place to dive if you're squeamish. Number 4. Murderous Chinese Emperor Tomb the tomb of a horrifying and murderous Chinese emperor has just been discovered by archaeologists while excavating a mausoleum in China. Before this recent discovery, archaeologists were unsure who the mausoleum belonged to. However, they just discovered an artifact in 2021 that has confirmed a long-standing suspicion that the tomb belongs to Emperor Liu Zhi, who ruled between 146 and 168 AD. This guy is also known as Emperor Huan, and it's all because of a seal discovered with the emperor's successor's name on it, Emperor Liu Hong. The legend states that Liu Hong crafted a mausoleum for Liu Shu after his death. But here's where the discovery gets scary. It's not about what was found, but rather about the guy who was buried inside the tomb. Emperor Liu Zhi ruled China during a time of great horror, when there was famine, when there were bloody rebellions, and when palace officials were being murdered on a semi-daily basis. Records from the 11th century claim that in response to the rebellions and the famines, the emperor killed and executed those closest to him. This would be the equivalent of the president murdering the people who worked in the White House because of an agricultural disaster in the country. Basically, Emperor Liu Zhi was a nightmare of a person. Number 3. The Mask of the Bat God An ancient jade mask was found in Mexico, and it's one of the freakier artifacts that has ever been uncovered in the country. It's known as the Mask of the Bat God and it was found inside the ruins of the Monte Alban Pyramids near Oaxaca. The mask depicts the savage Zapotec bat god, and there's no denying it is incredibly sinister. Monte Alban was the heart of the ancient and very powerful Zapotec civilization, and bats were symbolic among their people for several reasons. The most key reason was that bats lived inside of caves, temples, and tombs, all places related to the sacred world of the dead. This ended up encouraging the Zapotec people to come up with their own god of the underworld, who just so happened to take on the form of a bat. Plus, bats were significant because they came out at night, and nightfall was symbolic because it represented death and spirits. As for the mask itself, it was probably created between 100 BC and 200 AD. It was crafted out of 25 separate pieces of jade and is currently on display at the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City. Number 2. Secret Tunnel of Death with the help of some very skilled robots, archaeologists have just made a scary discovery of skeletons inside of a secret tunnel of death. This astonishing discovery was made beneath the Chavin de Huantar temple in Peru, dated about 3,000 years old. American and Peruvian archaeologists worked together with the latest robotic technology to identify three skeletons that had probably been murdered as part of a greater sacrifice. The robot was able to go into some very dark tunnels underneath the religious and administrative center of the ancient settlement, otherwise unreachable by archaeologists, and it was there that the bodies were found. 
The robots were designed by engineers at Stanford University, complete with lights and remote operation technology. It's now been estimated that there are about 35 interlinked tunnels beneath the complex of Chavin de Huantar, though the truth of what exactly they were used for and why the sacrifices of young people were left in the tunnels to rot is still a huge mystery that archaeologists need to solve. Number 1. Cocooned Mummy an extraordinarily rare mud mummy has shocked and surprised archaeologists all over the world. Researchers on the project published their findings in the journal PLOS-1 saying that the mud mummy is an unparalleled find, and that the mortuary treatment of encasing a dead person in mud has never been previously documented in all of the Egyptian history. Not a single other mud mummy has ever been found. And what's really scary about this mummy is that it looks as though the skeleton is wrapped up in some kind of cocoon. Some researchers are now saying that the mummy was likely wrapped in mud before being buried to emulate the intense embalming and mummification procedures used by the elite in ancient Egyptian society. That means that this mummy may have been interred with mud because mud was a lot cheaper than wrappings. It was also found that the mummy was put inside the wrong coffin. The mummy was male, dead since around 1207 BC, and yet he was found in a coffin designed for a female. It could very well be that whoever mummified this person was on a serious budget. Which of these amazing archaeological discoveries freaked you out the most? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already.